Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever it is. Hope you're having a good one. Uh, this is Mr. Schrader, and today we're going to be going over wave behaviors. Uh, what I have on the screen here is a page that I have shared with you. This is your notes, or what we're going to be taking notes over um, today, and you're going to be able to use this on your Google Forms that we're going to do for the assignment on Wednesday. If you have a printer, if you can, I highly suggest printing this out. Uh, if not, just make a little grid on some notebook paper, and I'm going to go through and take you through all the definitions of the terms for refraction, reflection, diffraction, superposition, constructive interference, destructive interference, Doppler effect, polarization, and resonance. Uh, so for each of these, I'm going to be giving you a couple picture examples, at least one picture, sometimes like this first one we got three. And then I'm going to explain some important facts, which are basically definitions and things that you need to know that are going to help you on that Google form on Wednesday. Okay, so here we go. Uh, here's the handout. We've got wave behavior. So we are starting with reflection. And this should be a really basic characteristic um, that you guys have familiarity with. If you look in a mirror, what is happening is the light coming off you is being reflected off the mirror, goes to the mirror, bounces back to your eyes, and that's how you're able to see the reflection. You're seeing the light waves that your body produced that were being uh, emitted from you reflect off the mirror. So our important fact or our definition is essentially this. Reflection is when waves bounce off of a surface. And here what's important and we're not going to go into too much detail on it, but it's, I think it's very important to know is that the angle of incidence is equal to the angle of reflection. So that means is if you look at a mirror straight on, it's going to go straight there and straight back. But if you look at an angle, you basically get to see twice that angle away. If you're looking at 45 degrees here, this would be another 45 degrees. That means from where you're at, you're seeing 90 degrees in the opposite direction. So this is how mirrors work, is we look at a higher angle or farther away, then that angle of reflection is going to uh, be the same value. So if we increase this, this gets bigger, and you're able to see farther and farther away. Okay. Now we're moving to refraction. And refraction is a little different. Okay, Sounds similar, uh, but this is a very different term. So what refraction is, and you've probably seen this phenomenon before, um, teachers have probably shown you the broken pencil maybe you weren't when you were in elementary. When you look in a glass of water and you have a straw or a pencil or something in it, and you look from the side, it looks like, hey, it's going this angle, but then it, there's this shift here. It looks broken. It could be going opposite ways. It does not look like it's one straight line. But when you pull it out, you know it's a straight line. So well, what is happening there? And essentially what is happening is this. The light is going to travel at a different speed in air than it does through liquid like water. Okay, Light travels faster through air than it does through water. It's going to slow down because it's got to push through more material, more stuff here. Um, so because of that, it's going to cause the light to get to your eyes at a different amount of time than this because the speed changes. So what refraction is, is the change of direction of a wave passing from one medium to another. And again, when we say medium, medium is things like air, water, um, it, anything that a wave can travel through. Okay. Now the speed of the wave changes with the medium and causes light to bend. Refraction is basically just the bending of a wave. If a light wave bends, from, and again, this is dependent on medium. So when it goes from one medium to another, then that is for sure refraction. So it's the bending of a wave as it changes mediums. Okay, Diffraction is similar because we're still talking about the bending of a wave. Uh, but what's different here is that this bending occurs specifically uh, when we send a wave through a slit or a gap or around a corner. Okay, So if we send a wave here, so say this is a sound wave, what we know happens is when we send a sound wave through a door, if you yell out an open door, you can hear it down the hall because that wave is going to bend as soon as it gets out the door and then spread out and propagate 
out through the hallway. It's you, You're going to hear it better if you're straight in front of it, like right here, right here. But we know for a fact that if you're standing over here, you're still going to hear it, even though the wave was just going this way. Okay. So what diffraction is, is the bending of waves as they pass around the corners of an obstacle or through a slit or opening. And again, that's the same thing. I'll try and draw this here. Um, if we've got a person, let's say we've got a wall here, and that person yells and sends the wave here. What happens as soon as we get here is now that wave is going to start spreading out, and somebody standing over here you can hear what a person over here is yelling as long as that distance not too far. The sound would be quieter here because it's spread out more, but it's definitely going to reach around that corner even if the person right here yelled. Okay? Um, so the way we can think of diffraction, tell it apart from refraction, is all waves will bend after passing through a slit even if they were straight before the slit. So again, diffraction is bending of wave so it sounds just like this but now we're talking about corners or slits or gaps or openings okay that's the difference refraction is because of a medium diffraction is bending because it's going around a corner slit or opening okay so moving on to the next set of examples here and our first one is this term super position let me get that on the screen for you. So what superposition is, is when we have two or more waves. So you've got this wave that's going this way, and this one that's repeating is a much smaller wave. And what superposition is, is really it is just the sum or combination of this wave. We're taking this wave plus this wave and saying, well, it equals this. Okay, so our definition is this. Superposition states that when two or more waves cross at some point, the resultant is equal to the sum of the waves. So superposition is really just adding waves together. Okay, now it, what matters, there's really two types of this. So superposition, we could also call interference, and we're going to hear the term constructive interference. So let's get into that now. So what constructive is, if you look at this wave and look at this wave here for this example, what you see is there's really two of the same exact wave. And their peaks are in sync. This peak and this peak and this trough and this trough and this peak and this peak. All of them are in sync. So what's going to ha happen here is we're going to add them both together. So the peaks here get larger because this is equal to this plus this. And the troughs get bigger as well. Um, so we have here is constructive interference is a type of superposition that occurs when the waves are going in the same direction. So when they're going in the same direction, that means their peaks and troughs are in sync. So again, this peak is in sync with this one. This trough is in sync here. And what happens is we get a perfect overlap. And when this happens, the amplitude of the final wave equals the sum of the original waves. We can add those two together, and we're going to get this value down here. And you can see that here, even if they're not the same wave, we have here is wave one is this little one right here. So this little wave. So we just look here. Wave two is this wave right here. And even though they're different sizes, what you should see is this peak and this peak are at the same spot. So if we add these two together, well, this one's going to get taller. And that's how you get this green value here. It's just adding them all together. So even though it's not the exact same height, the two waves are different heights, they're in sync with one another, they're going at the same time. You see the same thing at the troughs. We get this orange one here and this blue one here. Their valleys, their troughs are at the same point. So that allows them to add together and get a lower trough. So amplitude increases. This, really you could think of it this way, is this amplitude plus this amplitude gives you the big ring amplitude. Okay? Now, destructive interference, if constructive was adding together, uh, you can probably figure out that destructive is going to be, hey, we're doing the opposite. Instead of adding these values together, destructive has a negative connotation. We're going to subtract them. Okay? 
So destructive interference is a type of superposition that occurs when the waves are going in opposite directions. So instead of the same way, now we're going opposite directions. This means that their peaks and troughs are out of sync. They're not totally lined up. When this happens, the amplitude of the final waves equals the difference of the original waves. And what difference means again is difference in terms of physics and math means we're going to subtract them. Okay. So for example, if we had one wave going here and one going here, what happens is this peak lines up with this trough in their equal size, so they would cancel out. Their sum would be zero. Same thing here. We've got a trough with a peak. Cancel out. Cancels. Cancels. And what would, the result in here would be this totally flat wave. Now, this doesn't happen a whole lot in real life. It's very difficult to take a wave unless you know what it's going to be ahead of time and exactly cancel it out. Uh, whereas with constructive, this is like, hey, this is your right speaker and this is your left speaker on your monitor on your computer. And when they play the sound at the same time, it's going to be twice as loud. If you cut out one of those, you're losing half of the wave, half the energy, and it'd be quieter. Okay. What's more likely to happen is this type of destructive interference, okay? This type of destructive interference is we've got this red wave has a bigger amplitude. It's got more energy than this blue wave, but they're out of sync. This one's down at the bottom. This has a smaller amplitude than this red amplitude. This is bigger than this. So to figure out what is our result in this black one here, all we're doing is we're taking the height of the red minus the height of the blue, and that's how we get this black value here. Uh, I'm going to make it green because that's a little better. So this amplitude here is equal to this minus this. Okay. And again, what's important to note is we see constructive interference in life all the time. Uh, this is things at the same frequency. Uh, if, if you've got your choir all singing together, it's going to be significantly louder because they're singing the same thing at the same time, and those waves line up and you get constructive interference. Destructive usually doesn't cancel all the way out. It's usually more something like this. you got one type of wave going on, you got another type, and they're out of sync, and sometimes it gets louder and sometimes it gets quieter. Um, this is more realistic for the real world, uh, but for what you need to know on Wednesday is if they're going the same way, it's constructive, you add them together. If they're going opposite ways, especially this, totally opposite, they cancel out. Okay. And then our last page of notes, our last couple wave behaviors that we need to know. Uh, number one is resonance. And if we were in class, which would be great, and I'm already missing that, but if we were in class, I could get out these tuning forks and show you how a tuning fork works. Essentially, the way a tuning fork works is you smack it, and it's going to vibrate. And it's going to vibrate and cause the air near it to vibrate, and thus it's going to send energy through it in the form of a wave. Um, that wave is going to produce a certain pitch based on how fast this is vibrating. So each tuning fork has what we call a resonance frequency. It is a frequency that it vibrates at, which again is just how many times per second. And that produces a specific sound. Okay. Now what happens is if I take this tuning fork and one other one that has the exact same tune, so that these two are matched to one another, what happens is if I ding this one and let it play, those waves are going to hit here, transfer energy to it, and it's going to absorb it because it wants to vibrate at that same pace, and it will start ringing as well. And that could just go back and forth until enough energy is lost from going out to the sound. Um, so what resonance is, is the tendency of a system to vibrate with increasing amplitudes at some frequencies of excitation. They, these are known as the system's resonant frequency. So again, resonant frequency, we know what those are for tuning forks. Um, you could get the same thing if you took a, a, typically a wine glass. Here's my little wine glass. And if we fill it up to a certain amount with water and then you rub your finger around the top, um, if it's a little wet, you get that sound, that specific sound. 
And what you see is if we do that with varying amounts of water, wow, these drawings are terrible, so sorry about that. But if we do that with varying amounts of water, that changes the frequency or the tune, and we basically get an assortment of ranges, just like if we had a bunch of different tuning forks. Okay. Now, the resonator may have a fundamental frequency in any number of harmonics. Uh, this goes back to those videos we watched before, uh, and that has to do with standing waves and some things like that. Uh, but again, for right now, what I need you to know is that when we're talking resonance, it's mostly things have a tendency to vibrate at a certain rate. Um, and as the, you transfer more and more energy to it, that's going to increase their amplitudes and they're going to get louder and louder. Okay. Next, we've got the Doppler effect. And I hope you watched that little three, four minute video on it. I love that. Um, it explains it really well. You get the sound. What we know the Doppler effect to be is when we have an object that is producing waves, now that can be sound like this example, or it can be light like like this example, uh, what happens is because it's moving and producing waves, those waves get bunched up in the front and they get spread out in the back. So those waves are reaching an observer. It's not the person in the car. If you lay on your horn when you're driving in the car, that sound's coming from you and it's moving away from you, so you don't really experience that. But somebody off to the side, what's going to happen is you emit one wave, and then you're more forward, and you emit another, you emit another, and they get bunched up in the front. So the person in front of you, when you're going towards them, they're going to be bunched together. It's going to be a high frequency, a higher pitch. And then as you pass them, and they're behind you, now they're spread out. So you go from a high pitch to a low pitch as you pass somebody. Okay. So the Doppler effect is the change in frequency of a wave in relation to an observer who is moving relative to the wave source. I kind of think of this almost opposite of that as the source is moving, the observer is not, and therefore there is a change in frequency. For sound, this changes the pitch. That's what we were just talking about. For light, so if we're talking about a comet or a star that we know is moving, um, what happens is if it's moving away from us, the waves get spread out. Light with a longer wavelength is red. Light with a shorter wavelength is blue. So this is going to cause the light to either shift to red or blue. It should be redder or bluer than what we know it should be. And we've seen this um, in astronomy. Um, it's really huge for that effect. Um, but we'll get into that another time. Uh, just understand that red red shift or blue shift is caused by the Doppler effect in light, and that change in pitch is caused by the Doppler effect for sound. Okay. And then the very last one I kind of forgot to cover up is polarization. What polarization is, um, first we need to understand that light, light waves are spreading out equally in all directions. They're going up, down, left, right, every diagonal. Um, it's really... If you looked at it, it'd be spread out equally. And what we do when we polarize light is we add a filter. So that light's going to go through this filter here, which I'm adding vertical lines to. And what that does is after it goes through, now only the parts that were going up and down remain. So, and I guess I should make that more like there's three there and three there. And kind of all crazy like that. All that light goes through here and only this light is able to make it out or a portion of that light that's going through. Um, so what this does is it essentially just removes half the light that's coming through. When we talked about polarized sunglasses, okay, that's all that it is doing. It's taking the light that's trying to go through and it's only allowing about half of it to come through. Um, you could add another filter here. If I added one more filter that was going horizontally to that and we sent this light through here none of that is going in that direction and we would get zero light coming through um, so you know we make it back to class I'll show you I can take one here one here and as we rotate them it gets darker and darker when they're totally opposite directions nothing makes it through okay so again polarization is taking light and only letting it go 
in a specific direction, whether that's horizontal or vertical or something like that. Okay. Um, so that should pretty much do it for the notes. Hopefully you got all of these written down. Um, if you need some more help, if you don't think you're getting it um, and you would rather watch a video, these are three videos you can watch. Just click on the link on the computer. Um, it's not required. It's just some extra stuff that goes into details and gets a little better images or animations for you because all I can really do here is pictures. Um, but also, again, my office hours are always going to be 10 to 11. You can reach me on Zoom then. You can email me. You can remind. Um, anything you need. If you got questions, please make sure you're asking to get a hold of me. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. So uh, hope you all are doing well and hope to see you soon. Take care.